Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for episode 8 of Road to Colonization, and we pick up where we left off in orbit with the fuel shuttle that we placed in orbit last time, and what we've got to do now is to couple that um, nose cone, because that was just an aerodynamic thing, so we didn't have to put fairings on it, and we're going to send that first, st the second stage back to Kerbin, so we can get the money back for it, because it is a reusable space program, of course, that is how we save money, that is how we bankroll our missions, by not really having to pay for the rockets. Although, I guess they're not technically reusable, because I just recover them and get the money back. What would be cool, I guess, is if I actually landed it, say, on a barge like SpaceX, brought it back to port, reattached the stages and put a new payload on it. I have an idea for maybe I would try that one day, but it is quite hard to recouple stages. But maybe with a few mods I could give it a shot. But anyway, um, for now we are just going to recover it and get the money back, because that's easy. Also, if I were to do something like that, bring the things back to port and all of that, it would take a long time. These videos take a little while to record anyway, so uh, I'm not sure I want to be slapping out into the ocean uh, every launch. But anyway, we're going to bring this back now. It's going to pick up some uh, flames and land, I think, uh, just behind the KSC. It would have been nice to land on the KSC. That is always my goal because, you know, get all the money back and it looks cool. But for now, it looks like as if we're just going to land sort of behind the KSC a bit. I fire up the engine to stop ourselves exploding and make sure we don't hit the mountains because you really don't want to land on mountains. It's hard to land. It's hard to not fall down mountains. Um, I've had that problem a few times in the past. But yes, it looks like we're going to be fine once we've slowed down. We have a bunch of fuel on this because it's a big rocket. It's it's oh, it's a big rocket. Uh, anyway, we pull the chutes. Looks like we're coming down in some slightly rocky terrain, but we should be fine as, as long as we land slowly enough and the parachutes don't go away. But yes, we touch down. We fall over, the par but the parachutes save us. We roll a bit and then just recover the vessel. So yes, back in orbit after planning our maneuver to head out to Minmus, we're going to go because this is the fuel shuttle. Last time we landed a fuel miner, which has already been mining fuel, but we need to move that fuel somewhere. My plan is to bring it right back to the uh, Kerbin station and use it there for our various missions. I will also be launching a Minmus station this uh, this this uh, episode, so we may have some cool stuff around Minmus. We may have a bit of an industry going there, but we'll kind of see with that. It doesn't get too far this episode. So yes, uh, we fire up the nuclear engines. It's a bit of a slow burn because it's a big vehicle and it's only using nuclear engines, but uh, the thrust weight ratio is pretty good. The tanks aren't all full, but one thing I did realize is nuclear engines obviously only need liquid fuel, but I put all of the tanks on as liquid fuel noxtizer, which was a massive oversight on my part, given that I'm going to be using this uh, spacecraft for a long time. I was like, why aren't I getting enough Delta V? But it turns out just because I'm a fool. Uh, but that's fine. Uh, it, I, usually, I'm, I guess I just won't fully fill up the uh, oxidizer tanks in future. But anyway, we're on our way now to get our um, encounter with Minmus. It's a little off from what I planned, but it's fine. We could just plan a little more. Um, and yes, there we go. Gonna gonna head in there. Gonna get a nice little uh, nice little encounter. Um, go land on Minmus with this hulking vehicle, one of the bigger vehicles um, I've built for landing on places. We do a bit, a bit of a quick load because there are just texture glitches all over the place. Um, but yeah. I do like the size of this vehicle. I, I would like something even bigger, like a just massive thing that lands. I like that idea. That's why I like the uh, SpaceX ITS so much, the Interplanetary Transport System, because it's this massive vehicle that goes and lands on Mars. I'm not sure if I'd want to be on it, because it doesn't appear to have an abort system during launch, and also it's massive and it lands on Mars, but eh, maybe after like 10 flights I'd give it a shot. And also if I had like half a million dollars, which I don't, and probably never will. Well, I don't know, computing pays pretty well, maybe I'll move to Mars. Probably won't be a ton of computing jobs on Mars. Um, I guess I'll just, you know, become a space pirate. Ooh, Peter Taylor, space pirate. That wouldn't be too bad. Um, although I bet they'd be pretty mad, uh, <laughs> because there'd be like one spaceship there, so if I took it, I'd basically kill 100 people. Uh, so yeah, maybe I won't be a space pirate. Anyway, here we are at Minmus, um, and it's time to get into orbit and go and land. You can see the Ceres 1 station down there, the little Minmus station, which I never use because, well, I used to use it quite a bit in Road to Exploration, but it's become fairly useless. But we're going to have a far, a far more industrial station around this uh, little celestial body fairly soon. But for now, uh, those are just dreams of the future. Right now, we just need to go and land and hopefully uh, not slam into the surface. Luckily, Minmus is a fairly low gravity, um, so we shouldn't have too much problems, too many Pro too many problems? Not too much problem. Anyway, now we just need to get into the same plane as the lander so that we can go and land next to the lander. I guess it's a minor more than a lander, but it does land, I guess. 
I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> so yes, and then we'll do a quick deorbit and then go and land. I've said land too many times. It's uh, yeah. But yes, this should be rather useful for our for our little exploration plans because, as you know, I like reusable things. I like not paying for my space vehicles, and this will allow me not to pay for my fuel anymore. I'll just be able to go and land here, put it all in this spaceship, send it right back to the station, and just have everything for free. Um, which is great, and at some point, because I have the mods installed, I'll be able to mine rocket parts, and then I'll be able to build my spacecraft in orbit, and we'll never have to think about Kerbin again, it'll be great, we'll just never go back, I'll put all of my Kerbals in space, and we'll never have to pay for anything, which is great, because I'm running out of money, because I, at the end of Road to Exploration, I had about three and a half million funds, and I spent a lot of that building your big stations and things, and we're down to about two million funds, but by the end of this, after taking on a bunch of advances, which I promised to do those missions. Um, <laughs> we'll have uh, about two and a half million funds. So we're actually fine for money, but at some point we're going to run out because we are kind of bleeding money. But I'm, I'm, I've got some missions on uh, I've got some missions on, uh, on the way. The Minmus station should pay pretty well. But now we're just uh, redirecting ourselves a little bit so we can land actually at the uh, lander because the way we're going to get the fuel in there is using Kerbal Attachment System, of course. One of my favorite mods allows you to lay down little pipes to transfer fuel between uh, vehicles. It allows you to, uh, to attach stuff and detach stuff from spacecraft. But yeah, so we're going to need to be really close to, the, uh, really close to the miner so that we can just link them together with a pipe. Uh, but it looks like we've come down pretty well. We've got a ton of Delta V and we can basically burn all of our fuel because there's a miner here. Unless we run out of fuel from the surface, which I don't think we will. We've landed in a pretty good spot. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to land fairly close. I doubt I'll get really close enough because you have to be really tight in. Um, so I'll just do a quick, you know, change when we land. But yeah, it's looking pretty good. Looks like we're uh, not going to hit the surface too hard because, you know, Minmus is fairly nice. It's a nice place to land on. It's the one you should really start with if you're starting to play KSP. I know it seems a little more intimidating than the moon, but there's a lot more flat surfaces on Minmus, and it also has a much lower gravity, and generally requires less Delta V to uh, land on, do a whole mission there. So... Yeah, go for Minmus. The moon is just, yeah, whatever. Anyway, so we'll watch the landing at one time's time accelerator. Watch the finesse of this hulking vehicle, which actually doesn't look that big next to the miner, because the miner's pretty big as well. But when we get a Kerbal out, you'll see it is quite big. Anyway, the RCS fights to uh, keep us under control and stop us tipping over, but it looks like we're fine anyway. So now it's just a matter of, uh, well... Well, getting a Kerbal out, seeing if we can attach a pipe at this distance, but I don't think we can. Um, so I get the little Kerbal out, you can see the Kerbal is quite small next to the vehicle. It is a big old, big old vehicle, but I like it. It looks quite industrial, you know, it's very simple. It's just a big-ass fuel tank with a few engines on it, a flat top. It's not pretty, it's just doing its job. Anyway, when we try to link it up, you can see the pipe goes red. We're not nearly close enough to the lander, so I'm going to go and stand at safety next to these big, dangerous drills um, and move the vehicle over. Because obviously don't, we don't want to burn up the uh, Kerbal with our engines, because that's the engineer. We need the engineer to, you know, do the engineering work, connect these spacecraft up. Um, only engineers can really do Kerbal attachment-y things. Anyway, we do a quick jump with a, a little finesse. It's always hard to do smaller jumps because you've got to kind of flip around quite quickly and things. But it looks like we're pretty close now, however when I try and link up again after a bit of falling over, it's not quite close enough, which is annoying. So we get the Kerbal out of the way again, go and stand next to these super safe drills, and we're going to hop really close, hopefully don't destroy the lander, because it's quite expensive. The miner was not cheap, and this is a pretty big vehicle, but it looks like we come in pretty well, just miss the Kerbal with our landing leg, and <laughs> land gently on Minmus. Um, a little more uh, nerve-wracking at four times time accelerate. But anyway, we link it up now, uh, everything is fine, and now we can start transferring fuel out of the miner. Well, just start pumping fuel from the miner into the um, into the spacecraft. It'll just go right in there through the mine through the mining operations. So yes, we get the Kerbal back in, sit in this little pod for a while. Um, t send a little science home because we got a mission about fifty grand, a little bit of a little bit of seed money just for doing that. We turn on the right ISRU things to make liquid fuel and oxidizer, and it looks like we're going to make some uh, pretty decent fuel. I'm just going to set a quick alarm so I can come back in twenty five days. That's much too long. It would have fueled up much more quickly than that. But I've got things to do between then, so they're going to stay on um, uh, on the surface for about a month. Anyway, moving on to new things. Well, actually, fairly similar things. We're launching a pulsar. X, I think. Yeah, the Pulsar X. And atop the Pulsar Rock, Pulsar X, I almost said Pulsar Ox. It's not a cow, it's just Pulsar X. Anyway, yes, so atop this rocket is the first part of the Minmus Station. We have been contracted to build a Minmus Station, a big one, which actually fits my needs pretty well. The uh, goal for this is to be able to fit 
14 Kerbals, have a science lab on there, which I probably won't use, but the mission requires it, have some comms, power generation, and most importantly, be able to store 5,000 units of ore on board, which is uh, pretty intense, but we should just be able to, instead of turning the ore into fuel on Minmus, just fuel up the lander, uh, fuel up the miner, fly up here, dock to the station when I've put a docking port on the land on the miner, which it doesn't currently have, but you know, whatever, and then we'll just be able to fill this up with ore. Um, without having to send it up here because ore is very heavy and this is just the core There's gonna be a bunch of other modules But yes, we'll be getting about 400 grand for this which is pretty good because we're gonna get all of the ore for free as I said um, Because the miner will be able to ship it up Which is great. So not bad and it will be rather industrious We can put all the kerbals on there. We want we uh, since we're gonna have to have ore tanks on there We might as well put an ISRU on there and kind of have a backup processing facility Which will hopefully serve us quite well. Anyway, we're we gonna deploy all of these solar panels Get that all set up and send that rocket back to Kerbin, which should we do the deal. But, but you've seen that a few times, so I thought I'd just show you the landing. So you know that we are reusing our rockets, making sure we are making our money back, all of that. And we're going to land, hopefully gently, on the ocean. Yes, it lands very fine. It lands perfectly, and all is good. And then I kind of forgot to hit the record button as I went out to Minmus. So you miss me burning out to Minmus. I'm sorry. But we already went to Minmus this episode, so you know what it looks like. But the station arrives at Minmus. It's in a 50km orbit, which I think I'm actually going to bring down, because I think that's a bit too high. We're just going to waste fuel getting up here from Minmus, so yeah. But anyway, what we're doing now is uh, maneuvering the Phoenix 2 spacecraft, which is on its way to Elu. We sent it a few episodes ago, and it's neared its, near its next uh, maneuver. So we're going to let the flight computer take uh, control of this, do the maneuver, and hopefully get us on a good course for Elu. However, it uses the gimbal of the engine too much and sways us around a bit. It does complete the burn, but it is not where we want it to be. You can see it's way off, so we're going to have to manually do this a little bit. I should have done this manually anyway, but I like to use a flight computer because sometimes I don't have a connection. So what we want to do is burn um, pro retrograde, which I think I must have already done, then we burn north a little bit and then burn prograde a little bit, so it just pulls it in so we'll actually arrive at Minmus, and then we're going to be cutting it pretty fine. We're just going to have enough fuel to get into orbit of, into a highly elliptical orbit of Minmus. You can see we have just enough to do the bare minimum. But hey, we are going to get into orbit of Elu. I said Minmus, didn't I? I meant Elu. But yes, that will get to Elu in a couple of years. It'll be a while. But hey, that's heading there and that's good because my last probe just sort of flew by Elu. Anyway, we have another probe today. This is heading for Moho. It's a pretty small rocket for a Moho probe, but all of my Moho vehicles tend to be the best built. This is actually using an ion engine, the first one I've used in Road to Colonization and Road to Exploration. It's launching aboard a Starlight 1, my light lifting vehicle, just lifts about 12 tons, but the probe itself, including its transfer stage, is only about 5 tons because it has a little liquid fuel and oxidizer stage to do the escape burn, and then it uses an ion engine to do everything else, which should be pretty good because it takes a lot of Delta V to get into orbit of Moho because it's you, you're going really fast. But what we have to do is use um, a thermometer to get a couple of reports because we have a mission I've actually had for a while now um, to get a couple of temperature reports from certain spaces around uh, Moho, and I want to clean that up because I have a lot of um, a lot of ongoing missions, and I want to you know get some more space for new missions. So yes, this will be another probe heading down to Moho. I've sent so many there because the transfer windows come around so frequently. In Road to uh, Exploration, we sent a bunch of orbiters, and we landed on Moho, and it was all pretty good. I mostly used arc jet thrusters, which are kind of like ion engines. Well, not really in their actual. Uh, how they work, but basically they're very efficient, they use a lot of electric charge, but they burn monopropellant. But they are quite good. But now we're going to be using ion engines because they're so efficient and it's so good. Anyway, we need to land this uh, first stage now, which we caught when it was going pretty fast, pretty shallow in the atmosphere, but it does look like it will hold together. And we're going to land it using the, um, using the main engine, that's a big old vector engine with its... Um, thrust vectoring turned down, but it is still very efficient and we do like it very much. And it lands and we re recover it and stuff. But anyway, when I get back to orbit, I realize I've made a grave mistake. I forgot to put a omnidirectional antenna on this. It does work because it has the, um, for the second stage attached to it, but it won't be able to do its exit burn because that big antenna has a very narrow field of view, so it won't be able to actually communicate with the KSC which is really annoying because 
we gotta send this in like a day. So what we're gonna do is next episode, we're gonna send a Kerbal from the station around here. They're just gonna use their little drill from Kerbal Attachment System. They're gonna throw an antenna on this and we'll be able to go. It's a little annoying um, because I would have liked to just go right now. But hey, we make mistakes. You make mistakes, I make mistakes, I seem to make a lot of mistakes, especially with Moho probes. Once I sent one down there with no scientific equipment, and I was like, oh yeah, this is Kerbal Space Program, I need scientific equipment. But anyway, as the final part of the video, we go and take a quick look at the miner. It has almost, it's fueled up totally with liquid fuel and oxidizer, but it is missing some um, liquid fuel. So we're gonna set the miner to do that, to produce just liquid fuel. So that we can fill up the tanks properly and send this back next episode to the Odin station. This has been a bit of a short episode because we are at the end now. Um, I've just been kind of busy and this it took a little while to get various things set up. But I hope you've enjoyed it nonetheless. I think it'll probably be a longer, more packed episode next time. But yes, as I said, I hope you've enjoyed this. But this is the end of the video and if you want to go check out a couple more videos, there is my most recent episode of Prison Architect. In which we run a tight ship and have to beat down a lot of people because it's it's violent, it's violent prison. It's not very good. Um, <laughs> there's also my most recent episode of Subscriber Designs in which we take a look at a car and an iPhone 7 for some reason and an F35, which is pretty cool. The VTOL one, that's it's pretty cool. There's also links to my Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon in the description if you're interested. But as always, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been Casper with Tape. I'll see you next time.